Well, 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 good morning, good morning. It's Sunday morning. Once again, we've only got five people in the chat. We got Ivanator, we got Colin, we got Adrian, we got Jean Francois, the man of the hour, and Scott K. Oh, Jason. So maybe that thing's lying. So I see six, or maybe someone just keeps leaving. So that means we got six people in the chat. <laughs> six people up there. Maybe another one joined. So <clears throat> such a weird situation going on lately. Um, yeah, not just wake up fuckers, but people join the damn channel. <laughs> we need some. We need some rich blood and new blood in here. Come on. Uh, anyway, I have to. Hopefully, mow the lawn. Uh, oh, 7 p.m. in Poland. What's up, Katon, Katon, however you say your name. Um, welcome back. Glad you've joined us. Uh, we are still, still waiting for Mr. John Feedy to show up. I feel like it's like, where is Waldo? Uh, so uh, I need to mow the lawn today. It's been over a week since I mowed it last time, but we haven't had any rain, which I'm happy about. Because we've had like three years, four years, or five years of like way too much rain. But we've got an El Nino. And an El Nino, I guess, is causing no rain. And a colder summer forecast, which I will take for my heating or uh, my air conditioning bill. She's about it too early in the morning. It's 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're supposed to be like, I think there's rain like. 25 minutes off so i doubt i'm gonna be able to get to it but i'm gonna try to mow it because it needs to be mowed and then i want the rain to fall on it that's what i want to happen but probably not gonna happen or else i'm gonna be mowing in the rain okay singing in the rain what do we got for us today uh this is thanks to mr colin his uh winning set uh is mr jean francois and uh I'm excited to hear it because Jean, I'm guessing some Lalu. Is Lalu going to be on here? Because I think on your last two sets, Mr. Jeff, you've had Lalu. So I'm guessing Lalu is going to show up. Um, I think you might have some. No, we're done with Haken pretty much. So no Haken. Uh, who else could he have on here? Um, guess we'll just have to find out. Symphony X. Uh, you have Symphony X sometimes, but... Uh, where is our little German boy? Huh? Where is our little German boy, Sasha? He hasn't been around either. He's like, he should be out of school, right? So he has no excuse for not being here. How dare he? All right. Um, let's get into this. <clears throat> see what he's got. I think Adrian's hoping for a proggy set. Let's see. He says, hello, Cap in the community. Here I am with my Colin Blimey gifts set. Very glad to have won the big prize, just one point away above Cap and Morgan. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Colin, for offering us the free opportunity to submit songs in a fun way. As I have a few more or less ready to go future sets, at first I thought picking one of them, but because I need more time to refine them, instead I just went collecting five songs waiting to be picked, all in a typical not too surprising prog rock metal style. You don't need to play the game with me. The solution is new, 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 new. All right, so off first. Oh, this is, I hope it's, I hope it's what it is. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I asked for this, what, on Saturday morning, yesterday morning? <clears throat> and already it's going to be delivered. We here have our first song as Riverside. It's called Big Tech Brother. I, from the new album, which is what I asked for, this is one of my favorite songs by Riverside. Big Tech Brother, as the title points out, it deals with surrendering our lives to big technology. The only gripe I have is that it ends with a fade out, shortening the captivating instrumental outro. All right, let's get into this. It's seven minutes long. Oh, yeah. Hello, listener. If you want to hear the next song, you must first agree to terms and conditions. It won't hurt. Well, at least not now. Maybe later. Thank you for your cooperation. Okay. Ooh, we got that electronic-y sound again. Adding to the uh, little bit of a newer sound for Riverside. Okay. Oh, 
Wait, Sean Fitzwall, who did Lalu then? I thought it was you. The French band, right? Okay, I like this little run. This is cool. So far, we've had, what, two or three songs from the new album on here? And I've liked every one. Almost better than some of their older stuff. Not conceiving you. Conceiving me. Ooh, seeing my favorite. Oh, Colin's a lot of guy. Yeah. You French and English are all the same. Digging this so far. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> no, if I said something about the Irish, then maybe the Irish don't take any shit. Nice switch there. It's not really like strong in the mix. I've got it turned up, like in the red. Ooh, this is very David Gilmore, Pink Floydy. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> I was joking. Oh, the famous voice. I've nothing to hide. It's all okay and fine. Hey, where's our new boy from Discord? Heavy, are you in the chat lurking? Modified, being used, being searched, being liked, to monetize all that we've got. It's not for free. Marius, that's his name, right? Marius. Well, this life for everyone becomes too hard. This is, this is pretty different from Riverside. We must give in how it's breaking into this chorus here. I love it. Yes, but Scott, the Irish always have like a thing against the English. Like they get more butt hurt easy and they get more fight. Crap. Probably because they're the little brothers say that about the Irish. I have two Irish friends, so I'm just poking a bunch. We have the right to yes. ourselves. We have the right but. to not accept self-consciousness. Mm, I like that. This is where we could start being constantly assessed, profiled, Right, Ivanator. I'm not saying why, but I'm just saying that's the way it is. I've nothing to hide. Hide. I simply hate your style. It's the same way that I feel like. Like America really doesn't hate like Arabs, but Arabs obviously hate us because we did shit to them, and we just kind of have to deal with it. It's the same way that Japan doesn't really hate Korea as much as Korea hates Japan. Korea hates Japan because Japan did what they did to their history and ruled them. I simply hate your style. What are you saying, Adrian? You hate whose style? Mine? <laughs> yeah, I'm digging this song. I think it has a lot of Pink Floyd vibes in it. With like a heavy, heaviness connected to it. It's not like obvious. Oh, I didn't hear the lyric. I missed it. I was too worried about thinking about the Avish. Hmm. Yeah, 
Yes! What is up, Riverside? This is definitely going on the playlist. Yeah. It does feel weak. I don't know if this is like the compression of the file, but it doesn't feel full. Like a Devin Townsend full. Haymaker. Maybe that's why we haven't gotten enough people on the channel lately, because we haven't had Devin on here in a long time. That brought in a lot of listeners. I think um, Thomas Schumann is the one who like delivered him first time, a couple times. He hasn't been around. Matt Main. Matt Main used to come around whenever there's some Devin. He hasn't been around forever. I don't, I don't mind uh, Jean Francois. I don't mind the um, the fade because it's not like it's not like Riverside's going to go into a, like a fully instrumental crazy part. They don't do that typically, so that to me was a very fitting fade out for that song. Yeah, I like it. I wouldn't again. I see Ivy saying this. I see Colin saying this. You have to understand Riverside. Riverside never like very rarely. <clears throat> does something that is really grabby it's just very slow burn like the whole song which i think is great about them but i also think for me it's why they don't go over the top with me because they don't break through the barrier ever they just kind of and great riffs catchy to a degree but like nothing that is overly dramatic it's just i mean i wonder how this dude how they all have sex because i'm sure it's just like this uh, but I love it. Yeah, they're always in the pocket. It's a great way to put it, Scott. Always in the pocket. So, all right, here we go. Next one. This is a new band. I think. Spheric Universe Experience. It sounds very much like Liquid Tension Experiment. Is, are, they, are they like really proggy? This is called Transcending Real Life. First time submitting this French band. Ooh, also known as s.u.e. Sue, by the way, is my mother's name, Sue. Having five albums since 2005, singing in English, Spheric Universe Experience, have a typical Dream Theater Symphony X style. Mm -hmm. Liquid Tension Experiment, is that where they got it? <laughs> Transcending Real Life, the song, comes from their latest album, Back Home. I'm not always into the singer's voice. <laughs> Uh-oh. Although he goes very high clearly, but musically they deliver quality uh, metal and prog. The bass player, John Dre, is an acquaintance of mine. What do you mean by acquaintance? Like, acquaintance usually means you just kind of know each other's names and hang out every once in a while. Is that what it is? And how did you meet him? How did it work out? And is that how you got turned onto this band? And are you plugging him? Or do you actually like these guys? That's a lot of questions that you got to answer, John, in the chat. Here we go. This one is seven minutes long as well. You didn't write experiment. I just said that. Ooh. I dig this. I'm gonna turn it up. Yeah, this is very Symphony X more than Dream Theater right now. Ooh, I like it. Ooh. Now, this is a creative drum beat. Listen to this, people. Nice jungle groove, but he's doing some cool stuff. There's no more screaming loud. So definitely very 
not, it's my choice to live life. I think you described it perfectly. It's very dream theater symphony. It's like dream almost right in the middle. That's why I'm sailing through. Leaving our way ah, to okay. create. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a sick bass line and a sweet drum line, too. Because he could just do what he's doing right now. Da, da, da. But he's doing it. Yeah, James Lavoria is definitely better than this guy. Got Come on. As much as we want to rip on James, he's better than this guy. This guy sounds like Lalu. What's his name? Damon? This guy sounds a little bit like Damon whatever. It actually sounds like a um, fall of America. Damien Wilson, yes, I always forget his name. This guy sounds more like Damien Wilson than he does Dream Theater. And I would have to say I think James is better than this guy. Ah, oh, there's JBB lurking in the bushes. Ooh. Shake that right hand. Just sing hi. I like that tone. Good riffage. Oh, come on, Colin. You gotta get the Brie is like way old. It's been singing for over 30 years. Of course it's not. Peace out, Scotty. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna say I like one better than this. It's like comparing LeBron James now to Michael Jordan at the beginning. The point doesn't stand. Ooh, nice little monster fill there. All right, where's this going? Is this gonna be like the uh, middle section? I feel like it's gonna go off here. Like the middle section of constant motion. Yeah, see? By the way, that middle section of Constant Motion has got to be one of the best breakdowns of the song. Go listen to it if you haven't. The drums and the guitar solo are just fucking sick. Bass killing it. Yeah, this is very Dream Theater here. Less Symphony X and more Dream Theater-ish here. Adrian, if you think this is a cool part, you gotta stop saying you don't like DP. I'm telling you, you and fucking PD have like this internal unconscious bias against them. No, Jason, this does not sound like Symphony X. This is very Dream Theater. Especially the bass. I mean, he is like. He, yeah, this is. Jason, you have no idea what you're talking about in this situation. It's a dream theater. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it sounds like a Derek Sheridan lead on keyboard versus uh, George Roots. Jason, you don't even like Dream Theater. You don't listen to that much, so. Ooh. Ooh. 
time. Half time is so fucking light. I thought it was going to go back in the decision, but it didn't. The fact that they broke it right there, see, now they're back into full time. See, that half time break was probably the best decision they made in this whole song. What, Jeff? Musically, I think you're totally right. I, I think instrumentally, they're they're pretty on, man. They're good. Wow! You tell your bass friend next time you see him at a concert that he fucking rips on bass because he does, man. Some of those lines that he was running were very, very cool and very, very groovy. Fit in the pocket. Um, Adrian, the reason why you think DT is okay is because you don't listen to them that much. Uh, I, If I showed you more songs, you would like them more. Because I'm not saying I like every song they do, of course. But they have a lot of songs that you, when you listen to it, you'd be like, yeah, this is great listening. Especially since you like the gamut. You like poppy prog and you like you know, more instrumentally prog. They, they do both. That's why it's great. Anyway, I'm not going to try to dissuade you anymore. <laughs> All right, number three. Uh, I think that, I don't know, his voice is enough to maybe keep it off a playlist, but that was some, that hot halftime break at the end was just beautifully, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, beautifully, right on the tip of my head. Beautifully. Beautifully executed, what I want to say. Beautifully executed. Getting closer to dementia every day. All right, next on our list is going to make some people happy and some people really not happy. <clears throat> Adrian. Symphony X with Communion and the Oracle. This is 7 minutes and 45 seconds. Coming from their 2000 album V, the Myth New Mythology Suite, my favorite. Communion and the Oracle is a mid-tempo, almost balladish song that fits more into the progressive, less aggressive genre. It has everything I love about this band when they tend towards the epic, including a dramatic ending, but also with some delicacy. Okay, I'm gonna be awesome. Or awesome. I'm gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be honest. I've always said typically the only uh, Symphony X I tend to like is their heavy stuff. Like their balls to the wall stuff is kind of the only thing I really like. I don't really like their fantasy slash odyssey slash kind of weird neoclassical prog. I have liked a couple of their ballads. So if this is more ballady, I think this could be on the fence. I just don't like the cheesiness that they present a lot of times. I know, Jason, you love their lyrics, but I think their lyrics are fucking horrible 90% of the time. So this will be an interesting one to see if I like it. If it was balls to the wall, like Iconoclast, I might dig it a lot, but we'll have to see. Communion and the Oracle. Here we go. Number three. Okay. Okay, I do like this proggy sound here so far. Ooh. Okay. I like how that the keyboard's in straight and everybody else is kind of in syncopated mess. Digging it so far, hasn't gone into the like. <laughs> Sorry, Jason, I know. Their lyrics to me suck. <laughs> I do like to do 
music so far. But the reason I think their lyrics suck, and I've told you guys, I like very practical, non-fantasy stuff. ever get bored of talking about this stuff because every song lyrically sounds the same. Who writes their lyrics? Now, I'm telling you, singing is on point. I do like this, like, instrumental. I don't give a shit about lyrics, so I don't pay attention to it, so. So far, I'm digging it. Yeah, I, I like this kind of... Ooh. Ooh, nice harmonies. The 
Jets fans, you should be thanking Jean Francois because this is a great song. This will go on a playlist. How's it gonna end? I hope it doesn't, I hope it just kind of... Ow. So, I'm gonna say, I don't like it as much as one. I still like the Riverside song more. But, I dig this song a lot. I might put this above Riverside, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm going to change. I have to give it. I mean, this song was really good. Switch it. I have switched after thinking about it. All right. So, um, yeah, that had all of the uh, elements, I think, that was good for a song that I like. Had a... Like, good instrumental, like, things that were intricate enough, but, um, like, made you have to pay attention. Like I said at the beginning, the keyboard kind of doing, like, a straight kind of run versus the band doing, like, syncopation and different rhythm. Totally cool. Makes your brain have to think about what's going on, but still appealing in the way that it's coming off. Uh, I like the harmonies. I thought, you know, the chorus and, like, how they built uh, was catchy, which I think is a necessary tool for a good song. Uh, yeah, and the lyrics, though I did not pay attention to them, are, again, are low on my list, and that's a good thing in this situation, because I don't really care that much, but <clears throat> if they are, if I am going to pay attention and I do care about them, I like a more practical kind of situation. So, yeah, that was good, good pick, and I wonder, I'm actually surprised that it took four years for us, because Symphony X was on this channel, like, at the very beginning, and I'm actually surprised that it took this long for this song to come out if people know that I like Dream Theater because um, this is more in the Dream Theater vein versus the neoclassical Symphony X vein um, yeah good song all right um get to the number four this is called Wastefall I don't think we've ever had them on the channel the short song Dance of Descent Wastefall was a Greek band that had a short career with only three albums in the 2000s. In 2007, they released Self Exile, a very solid album from which Dance of Descent comes from. They are not unlike Pain of Salvation style with a lot of... Wait, they are not unlike? You mean, are you trying to say they are like Pain of Salvation? With a lot of emotion in singing parts. Unsurprisingly, they were the opening act of Pain of Salvation in 2007 when I saw them in Paris. Okay, so here we go with Dance of Descent. Like we have like a mango dance I can see the pain of salvation comparison. Oh, 
Whoa, where'd that come from? Okay, I was hoping that that, I mean, because that was, I don't know, a minute of just like straight. But still keeping that like same tempo. Again, out of time would be good here. Reminds me of a band called Burlap the Cashmere. If it would change, I would like it more. I like that, 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 that cool little accent. Yeah, Adrian, that's what I'm feeling. It's like, that's why I wanted to switch. It's like, it's cool for like a minute, but give me something different. This is like the flamenco version of punk rock. Nice. Please go to halftime. But it's not, because it's only a three minute song. All right, um, yeah, I think I said it in the reaction. Um, cool, I guess, for like a couple seconds, but I, I wanted some sort of change. Uh, there's gotta be, there's gotta be some sort of change. A little too, I guess I said, it's the, uh, the punk rock of flamenco. <laughs> Good, that's what it felt like. Uh, yeah, just, if there was some change, I would have liked it, but the fact that it was three minutes makes it, easier to handle but if it was like five or six minutes of that just straight i think i definitely would have been like oh <laughs> all right uh let's get to the last one we have had this band on here before a couple of times i think because of you jean this is diablo swing orchestra the name of the song is exit strategy of a wrecking ball Swinging prog rock metal style is coming back to end this set with Swedish band Diablo Swing Orchestra and this song Exit Strategy of a Wrecking Ball. I love their song titles. <laughs> coming from their 12, 2012 album Pandora's Piñata, I always have fun listening to their unconventional way of providing entertaining music by mixing numerous influences including brass instruments. Yes, uh... This, I think I tend to not enjoy this because I don't like the, usually the, uh, the trying to connect the like brass and the horny stuff with, um, frog kind of stuff. Other than I do appreciate, thank you scientist, the way they do it, but I don't know, sw a swing style kind of with frog is a little weird, but we'll, we'll see how it, how it goes. Um. I can't remember. I definitely know I haven't loved this band in the past, but I haven't think I disliked them either. So we'll see how it turns out. Okay. Hey, Ivanator, look who's sexually minded now. Huh? I wasn't thinking that. Okay. I like this opening. Ooh. Yes. So far. This is absolutely sick. Okay, 
so far, I am totally digging this. I don't mind that horn stuff. It was it was an addition versus a, a focal point. Sounds like Casey from uh, Deer Hunter. Like this part sounds very Deer Hunter-y to me. Which I haven't heard Deer Hunter's new album either. How come nobody suggested that? I've only heard like two songs from the new Deer Hunter album. Come on, people. I like this kind of change. might be my best song today. Adrian, did you see what I said to you in Discord? That kid singing Deftones in the library being picked out? Dude, I am digging the shit out of this song. That heavy ass riffs, the switch up, and then back to the heavy, hell yeah. Oh, I gotta go through the Discord though. I, in the past, when you played them, I don't think I've liked them this much. This is a fucking sick ass song. I like his voice too. He's got like that emo slash indie kind of sound to it. Ooh, off beat. Yeah, I mean, this song right now is taking first place in things like this. Love that. Off Is that it? Doesn't sound like it. Big, and there's a switch again. Keep it like of that like middle section and then back to the heavy is brilliant and very well done in transitions. Yes. This is like everything you like in a song except like the froggy runs. They are doing a fantastic job and like the mix is very punchy. I like how punchy it is. Colin, I totally disagree with you on that. It is not that, I feel like it's not uh, dizzy at all. It's got just a straight kind of riff and then a kind of slow section and then a straight heavy riff. Not going off and doing the or anything like that. Dude, hell yeah. That's the end, right? Holy shit, that song was sick. So right now, five, three, and one are going on playlists. I like two and four to a degree, uh, or not four, but I like two, but I don't know if that'll go on a playlist. We'll have to see, because that voice. 
Wow. That song was sick. Very well done. Very well written. And uh, I'm really happy with that. So, uh, yeah, that brings us to the end. Uh, Colin, I think that was money, at least for me, well spent for Jean. <laughs> because I've got three new songs that are going on a playlist. So happy about that. Um, yeah, looking forward to uh, tomorrow night. We've got Mr. Jim back up because nobody had a set. And then um, next Sunday, not Saturday, because remember next Saturday I will be at the air show here in Columbus. The Blue Angels are going to be here along with the F-22, which will be sick of shit. And then uh, we don't have one that following Monday because uh, we wanted to have Colin's winning set for everybody, which would be Jason Gentry, Adrian, Ashley, Ryan, and myself. That will be the following Saturday, June 24th. So, looking forward to it, people. Um, we'll see you tomorrow night for Jim's set. Is it going to be Marillion again? Maybe. We'll have to find out. So, I love Marillion. They did a good job. Okay, so have a great Sunday. I got to go mow the lawn. Hopefully, it's not raining yet, so I can do so. Peace.